Today we're going to discuss Born-Haber diagrams. And so here's what we're trying to determine. It could be asked several different ways. What is the heat of formation of sodium chloride? Or what is the lattice energy of sodium chloride? So there's a couple different uh, questions that can be asked. So basically what we're trying to determine is how do you go from your reactants, sodium metal and chlorine gas, to sodium chloride? And so I'm going to break it up into steps for you, and then I'm going to show you the diagram. So just a little sneak peek. Here's what the diagram looks like, and it shows all the steps that are involved uh, in this process. So let me kind of give you the uh, summarized version, and then we'll look at the graph. So you start off with, and we'll, and we'll look at sodium separate from chlorine. So you start off with solid sodium. And to make sodium chloride, well, what does the sodium look like in sodium chloride? Well, it looks like this. Now, technically, technically uh, we're not talking about an aqueous solution here. So there's no water. So the sodium ions are actually uh, gaseous. So individual sodium ions by themselves. All right, so let's take a look at the chlorine. How do we go from chlorine gas to sodium chloride? In sodium chloride, we have chloride ions. So that's basically what needs to happen. The sodium, solid sodium, think about what that solid looks like must turn into an ionized gas and then the chlorine molecules must be turned into chloride ions again as a gas so let's take a look at the diagram here so here's where we're starting we start off with our reactants sodium solid chlorine gas and so again uh, we're going to do one thing at a time so first thing is we need to turn that sodium metal, remember you have a whole bunch of sodium atoms all stuck together, all held together by metallic bonds. And so we need to separate those into individual uh, sodium atoms. And so it says delta H A T. So that stands for, AT stands for atomization, where you're taking something and breaking it up into individual atoms. Okay, so that process where you're separating the sodium atoms in the metallic uh, sodium from each other uh, requires energy so according to this diagram it requires 107 kilojoules per mole of sodium all right our next step is to then take that those individual sodium atoms uh, which we see are again in the gaseous state so we said so we needed individual sodium atoms and you have to turn those into sodium ions so how do we turn a neutral atom into an ion? Uh, we need to remove an electron. So this is ionization energy, this step here. So ionization energy, 502 kilojoules per mole uh, for sodium. So now the sodium is ready to go. We have Na plus individual ions. Let's take a look at the chlorine. So we have, uh, again, if we're looking at, uh, let's go back to the balanced equation. I want to show you something here. So if we're trying to find the heat of formation, that's the energy absorbed or released when one mole of a compound forms from its element. So notice in our balanced equation, we have half a mole of chlorine molecules. So let's go back to our diagram so we can see what's going on here. So we take that half a mole of chlorine molecules. Again, we are, our ultimate goal is to get chloride ions. So first we need to separate the two chlorine atoms from each other. And so we end up with, again, this is delta H atomization, where we separate the two chlorines. Now this is also the bond energy. Remember that bond energy is the energy required to break covalent bonds. So the two chlorine atoms in this molecule are held together by covalent bonds, or a covalent bond. And 121 kilojoules per mole is how much energy is required uh, to separate those atoms from each other. So at this point, we have Na plus individual gaseous ions, and we have neutral chlorine atoms in the gaseous state. 
So we need to form chloride ions. So we take the chlorine atoms and we add an electron. So what is that process called or what do we refer to that trend as where we add an electron to something? That is electron affinity. So we have delta H EA, electron affinity here, where we take the chloride, sorry, chlorine atoms and turn them into chloride ions. Uh, notice the arrow this time is pointing down. Uh, this indicates that this process is exothermic. Remember the definition of electron affinity, the energy released when an atom gains an electron. So, so far we've had all endothermic steps. Again, we've, I put number one here. This is where we're starting. That step to form uh, the individual sodium atoms is endothermic. That step to form the sodium ions is endothermic. This step to form individual chlorine atoms is endothermic. And then we see our first exothermic step uh, when we form the chloride ions. Now we have sodium ions and chloride ions. They come together to form our sodium chloride solid. So uh, what is the energy released when ionic bonds form? Same as the energy required to break ionic bonds. This is known as lattice energy. So again, notice this step is exothermic. Uh, energy is released when attractive forces form. Energy is required to break attractive forces. So here we're forming attractive forces between the positive sodium ions and the negative chloride ions. And so that process is exothermic. So here's where we end. So maybe I should relabel it. And notice we have energy over here on our y-axis of our graph. So we start off with substances that have relatively high energy, go through all these processes, and what we end up with has less energy. Well, if what you end up with has less energy than what you started with, then how would we describe that process? That process is exothermic. More energy total is released in these two steps here that is required in these three steps here on the left. And so the difference between the energy required and the energy released is the net energy that is, in this case, released. And so we see, again, arrow pointing down, 411 kilojoules per mole of energy is released during this process. That is our delta H. So be familiar with all of the steps required to go from, again, solid sodium and chlorine gas to sodium chloride. Some of those steps are endothermic, some are exothermic. If more energy is released than is required, then that process overall is exothermic. Opposite's also true. If more energy is required than is released, then that process is endothermic. So you'll be given some information about uh, some substances and numbers such as um, heat of formation, uh, lattice energy, ionization energy, electron affinity, and you'll uh, use those numbers to answer some sort of question. All right, that's it for Born-Haber diagrams.